Today I want to discuss a topic that's a little bit off course for this channel because this channel is almost exclusively, or I'm, I have said exclusively about the um, New Covenant for Israel. The salvation for Israel is guaranteed. Um, I will find a way to segue back into that with this subject but it is concerning <clears throat> marriage today. Is it something that a man or a woman should do if they are seeking the truth, if they are seeking righteousness today? Well, I've had a very interesting life. I'm 59 years old now. And there, in back when I was younger, uh, from, from 18 years old and onward, a lot of young men would have envied uh, me back in those days because I didn't have to try to impress women, I didn't have to chase women, nothing. Um, I was a very handsome young man. They chased after me. So I did not have to uh, learn, I did not have to learn finessing and dating, you might say, at all. But what I found out, I learned a lot from that. I learned that women, even in those days, were not worth dating or even less marriage women in general I'm not talking about all women it was women caused me a lot of difficulty a lot of hardship a lot of distraction to the point seriously that the way I lived my life after my wife passed away was altered due to women let me explain uh, to you a few things here so, when looking for a wife, I did the best that I possibly could to find one that was closest to what I thought a virtuous woman should be. One with no excess baggage, like illegitimate children, or even one, she was even chased completely before marriage. All right. So this would, she would be, in modern language today, she would can be considered high caliber. And compared to what was around, yeah, absolutely. Yet, she still did not grasp the most, some of the most basic biblical things, even though she went to a Bible school. And 
I forgot to pull this up. I have to um, I have to pull this up as a basic concept of the man. Well, she her she made a statement one day that she said that the woman was made for man and man was made for woman. Is that true? Well, I, I immediately stopped her and said that is absolutely false. I told her that Paul specifically said that a woman was made for the man, not the man for the woman. Let me show you something. Okay, let me see if it's in First Corinthians, or is it, yeah, 11 verse 12. Now, graduating Bible school and not knowing this truth, it was shocking to me. That told me how far off, now, look, I was 26 years old at the time, okay? That told me how far off course even the most Um, uh, theological schools could come up with, they still couldn't handle the basic truths that Paul taught uh, in 1 Corinthians and 1 Timothy. Uh, I will go ahead and uh, start here in verse 1. Be you followers of me, even as I am of, not Christos, the Moshiach. You can say Messiah in English if you want to because it is rooted in the Hebrew word Moshiach. Christ is rooted in an idolatrous word of Christos, which is Greek. Now, I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered to you, to, to you. I would have you know that the head of every man is Moshiach. And the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Moshiach is Elohim, Jehovah Elohim. Every man praying or prophesying Having his head covered dishonors his head. This is the reason why when I speak to you uh, in, in these videos, I always make sure that my head is not covered. Whether it be by hair or, or by hat. But every woman that prays or prophesies, it should read, well, uh, prophesy, with her head uncovered dishonors her head. Who is her head? Her head is a man. What man? Either her husband or her father. <coughs> for that is even all... Oh, for every woman that prays or prophesies with her head uncovered dishonors her head, for that is even one... as if she were shaved. For if the woman be not covered, let her then be shaved. Because it is, since it's obviously for a woman to have her head shaved, it's a shame unto her. So it is a shame for a woman to be shorn or shaven, then let her be covered. For a man indeed ought not cover his head, for as much as he is in the image and likeness of Jehovah. But the woman is in the glory, the likeness of the man. For the woman is not 
of the woman, but the woman is of the man. That's exactly right. Even your chromosomes prove that, your X and your Y chromosomes. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man and now. So we go back to, I wouldn't say my first encounter, uh, people are going to take get the wrong idea of what encounter means. Today it means something else. But when I say encounter, this uh, young woman, 16 years old, tried to trap me. Told all the other young women that... <clears throat> What, what did she say? Stay away from Henry. He is mine. And of course, the other girls came and told me about that. And I said, no woman owns me. I belong to no female. And at that time... She was using all kinds of her feminine wiles, as you might say, uh, to try to trap me, and I just left town. I took off and left town, went to another state. One reason was because there was very little work to be found to make a living. Oh, I was 18 at the time, you see. Don't, don't y'all get these strange, weird ideas about me and 16-year-old girls. So I left town at 18 years old, $75 in my pocket, and my old car. I drove down to Florida where there was work. I could make a living. Not much of a living, but I could make a living. And when I was down there uh, in the Florida-Georgia line, I found out uh, that the women in that area, especially in Jacksonville, were about ten times worse. Yeah. It was a lot worse. And in northern Georgia, the economy and everything, it was terrible. Um, Men could hardly make a living doing anything. The uh, families kicked their children out when they were 13, 14 years old, and a lot of the children had to go live out in the swamp in tents, eating armadillos or whatever they could get their hands on. This was back um, in the early 80s. And after, I don't know if it was six months or a year, I just couldn't take it anymore. And I had to go back home. When I got back home, the, the little girl that I was talking about was not around. She found herself another man to tra trap and get married to. And of course, you know, not that many years later, she was divorced again. Surprise, surprise. And so I had met, I found a, a wife at when I was 25, 26 years old, married her. And I had to teach her these things after she graduated Bible college. This, I had to teach her. Uh, 
Um, she was halfway resistant to it. And nearly seven years later, she passed away from cancer. And it was only in the last few months where she really accepted the truth wholeheartedly. Now, For this cause ought the woman to have power upon her head for the messenger's sakes. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman. Obviously, I could not have come into this world without a woman, my mother. Neither the woman without the man. In Jehovah, for as the woman is of the man, so is every man also by the woman. Notice it's not equal. It is each one has a certain role. But all things in Jehovah, judging yourselves, is it right that a woman pray unto Jehovah uncovered. So if a woman feels like she does not have enough hair to cover her head, which she should, and she knows the truth, then she needs to take something and cover her head when she's praying. Doesn't even nature tell you that if a man has long hair, it's obviously talking about hair for a covering, this is one of the big one of the bugaboos that my dad had as a former Amishman concerning women and their bonnets. And he was right when he said the woman's hair is her covering. It, isn't it a shame unto him when he has long hair and uh, if a woman have long hair, it is her glory. For her hair is her covering. So what do the religions do? They don't listen to the words of Paul. Nobody does. A woman's hair has, needs to be sufficiently long enough to cover her head completely when she's praying. But if any man seem to be fond of strife, this is not even something to be even contended with, he says. We have no such a habit. We don't have the habit of being full of strife in these issues. And neither should the churches. So I want to go to... First Timothy. Instructions to women. Verse 9. In like manner also that women arrange themselves, not adorn, but arrange themselves in modest apparel. Modest. Do you know what modest? Nobody knows what modest means today. With a sense of shame. With a hido, a hidochi. A sense of shame and sobriety, not with broided hair or braided hair, or gold, pearls, or costly array. Now, the Amish had that partially right because when they get married, they don't trade rings. There are other 
groups that don't trade rings either. That is a Roman um, tradition. Now, going back to here, braided hair. As I understand correctly, my mother telling me that the Amish women did braid their hair, but they rolled it up in the bonnet so, you know, so it couldn't be seen. Uh, he's talking about exposed braided hair and gold and pearls and costly array. What was the, one of the things that my wife constantly hounded me for it was jewelry. Every man's wife today constantly hounds them for jewelry. Paul says no. No jewelry. I don't have any either. So even back then, when I got married, not knowing, not knowing the truth of what marriage in this world really, really is, and I'll tell you what it is in just a minute. Um, I never wore my wedding ring. Because of this uh, verse, I wouldn't, I, I didn't wear the wedding ring. And, you know, my wife understood that I was a, uh, I did physical labor, and then I explained to her that a ring will get a man's finger taken off in my line of work. So she understood it. But ladies, to live a righteous life, you don't do your hair fancy. Bleaching, dyeing your hair. You don't wear gold, pearls, or any sort of costly array. But which becomes women professing sobriety or fear of Elohim. Because these things right here do not come with the fear of Elohim at all. They come with lack thereof. So, you men looking for a wife today, good luck with that. Because they all do this. Well, almost all of them do this. In opposition to what Paul said. And I know the women will say, well, if we don't put our stuff out there, the men won't notice us. If you don't put your stuff out there, a sober-minded man might actually notice that. Have you ever thought about that? That's how I noticed my wife. She didn't wear makeup, but the funny part about it was, was after we were married for some time, she asked me if I, if she could wear it. Well, I said, well, I would say, why? Why would, for, for who do you want to wear this makeup when you know I don't like it? Is it for somebody else? And of course, that would, that would shut her up. But things which becomes those who profess to be the fear Elohim with good works instead. Maybe you should take that money that you would have spent for, you know, that $150 that you would spend for bleaching your hair over there at the hair salon. Maybe go take that money and spend it on, give it to somebody who might need it. You know, the jewelry that you want, maybe you should instead take that, and if you got so much money laying around, maybe you should go give some alms to poor Jewish people. Let the woman learn in stillness. 
That's right, stillness, silence means the same thing. That is something right here is something that women today simply are incapable of doing. I'm saying in general, I'm not saying 100%. Let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. They don't like that at all. They want equality. Subjection, submission, obedience. Now, that was one of the other things that uh, my wife had difficulty with. I always complained about you want a woman who's submissive. Jehovah wants women to be submissive. There's a reason, folks. I'm I'm getting to the, I'm getting to that point. Paul had it right. He provides a reason. I suffer not a woman, I do not allow a woman to teach nor to usurp authority, to govern, exercise authority over men, but to be in what? Silence and stillness. Why? It provides a reason. And this reason is diametrically opposite of what all religions teach today. All these religions, they claim that Adam was standing there watching his wife being deceived by the serpent. And then, knowing what happened, he took of the fruit and did eat. That is absolutely false. That's not what happened. For Adam was first formed... And then Eve. So Adam was first, Eve was second. The woman will always be number two. The man will always be number one in this equation. Adam was not deceived. Now, listen to Paul carefully and checkmate. You will find out that Adam had no idea that he ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. But the woman being deceived, she was in the transgression. And if she was in the transgression, as opposed to Adam not being in the transgression, the sin. What? In order for that to be true, Adam could not have known what was given to him until it was already too late. He assumed that she had his best interests at heart. He assumed that when he told her, that's right, he told her, Jehovah told Adam before the woman was created. Let me show you. Genesis 2 and verse 15, and not the Lord God, but Jehovah Elohim took the man and put him in the garden of eating to dress it and to keep it by himself right, by himself. And Jehovah Elohim commanded the man, saying, it does not say the man and the woman, the man, saying, of every tree of the garden you may freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat of it, for in the day that you eat of it you shall surely die. This was before Eve was created. And Jehovah Elohim said, It is not good for a man to be alone. 
Bingo. He told the man. The man told the woman. What Jehovah told him. And then he created the woman. So we go to verse 3. So the man tells the woman. What did the woman do? Now the serpent was more crafty, shrewd, than any beast of the field which Jehovah Elohim has made. And he said unto the woman, did he say, does it say he said unto the woman and the man? No, it does not. She was alone. He, what the serpent waited for the proper time when the woman was by herself. <clears throat> Has Elohim said, you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, <clears throat> We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Elohim has said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Wait a minute. That's not what he said. Adam added, Don't even touch it. Because we just read that Jehovah Elohim did not say, Neither shall you touch it. He just said, you shall not eat of it. But Adam added more for accentuation purposes. Don't even touch it, woman. And the serpent said unto the woman, you shall not surely die, for Elohim knows that in the day thereof you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. like Elohim or Elohim like Elohim knowing good and evil and just like that and when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and a tree desired to make one wise she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also to her husband does not say with her, as King James says. She just gave to her husband, with hers not there, and he ate to eat. He, she gave unto her husband to eat. He gave her explicit instructions. And she didn't even tell him of the encounter with the serpent. The only thing that Adam was guilty of was what then? Are you ready? This is going to make some females very, very angry. But I don't care. I'm too old to care. The only thing that Adam was guilty of was trusting his wife. But now the condemnation comes, and he can't stop it. He assumed... that she would be truthful. He assumed that she would be honest. He assumed that he, she would come straight to him if something went wrong, if something was not right, if something didn't make sense. What happens today when you get married? I'm going to tell you what happens. You get married. 
you sign a marriage license that was not conceived by Jehovah Elohim, neither was approved by Jehovah or Yehoshua or the prophets. You essentially hand your testicles over to the state. Now, who rules the world today? Satan. You know this. Watch. I think it's here in First John. No. But this is a good one to, to look at. For whosoever is born of Elohim overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. All right? Knowing this, then, why in the world would you sign a marriage license handing yourself over to the world. What do I mean? I'm telling you, a man who signs a marriage license basically hands his testicles over to the state. I know that sounds sarcastic, but it is language that people today can understand. What he does is he signs his Jehovah ordained masculine authority over the woman to the state. Now you know what I mean. Let's take out the word the here and okay. So, uh, we see right here who this, the God of this world has blinded the minds of unbelievers. So, we know that, that the structure the traditions of this world are from Satan. And one of those institutions of this world is marriage as we know it, where a man signs over his authority as a man over the woman, he signs it over to the state so that if the woman gets out of line, or doesn't act right, as a lot of black folks say. I love that term, by the way. When she doesn't act right, and the man tries to take back his masculine authority that was given by Jehovah Elohim, she runs off to the state and makes the state exercise Satan's authority over him. You know what I mean. I do not need to go and show you YouTube videos, uh, YouTube channels about as they say, MGTOW, men who go their own way. I've been accused of that before I even knew what it was. And yes, it's true. I refuse. And my dad, you know, when he was still alive, he said, you know, you can find you, you can, you can probably find you a decent woman among the Amish. And I had to explain to him several things. There's no guarantee that I could get one of those to 
even after I point out the tradition of the bonnet and the fact that they don't take care of their teeth. Once they get introduced into this world, there's no guarantee that she's not going to do the same thing that the people of the, that the rest of the women of this world do. And such a woman will not accept uh, a marriage without a marriage license by the state anyway. Which, once again, let me say it over, I, no, I'm not going to say it over and over again, I'm just going to say it one more time. Listen to me carefully, young men. That when you sign a wedding license, you are signing over your masculine authority over the woman to the state. You are essentially cutting your testicles off and handing them to the state. There is nothing righteous or holy 